In this session, we're going to cover how to change the valve seat on a ball intake valve. This will apply to not only the standard BIV, but also the jumbo BIV. First of all, we'll go over the kit. What comes in the kit is a, uh, a hose gasket for 5 inch and 6 inch, and also the, get the, uh, the shutoff seat that's going to go inside the valve that actually does the water shutoff. Uh, tools needed, uh, basically it's very simple, a hammer, and then some type of a flat device that you're going to use to, uh, to unscrew the, uh, the valve retainer ring, which is this piece here. Uh, both valves have a similar uh, type uh, orientation that uh, this uh, nut basically holds the seat in place and also gives it preload. First step is to take a look at the, uh, the gap that you have here or the, how flush that the nut is to the back ring. Uh, the standard BIV is basically flush to the back ring. The difference between this two, and this is the only difference, is the jumbo BIV, the, there'll actually be an eighth inch step between the valve nut and the back ring. So just keep that in mind if you're doing the jumbo BIV versus the standard BIV. Basically, after you've taken a look at to see how that's supposed to be, because you're going to need to observe that when you're done with this to make sure that you're at the right position with that valve nut, is to go ahead and take your flat piece of metal or plastic or something that's not going to harm these two, uh, two nubs and basically use your hammer and start to drive that nut out. Now, this may take a little while to completely unscrew that and get it so that it's uh, loose enough that you can remove it by hand. Uh, there is quite a bit of preload on this uh, on this nut, so it does take a little bit of force and uh, hammering around to get that off there. Once it's loose, then you can go ahead and just unscrew it by hand. It comes off. Just kind of make sure that you inspect this, this surface here to make sure there's no nicks or dings on that surface and set that aside for now. Next thing we'll need to do is remove the old seat. Um, you can just use either a, a screwdriver or a sharp piece of metal or something to get back in that corner and kind of remove that seat. Take the old seat, put that aside, we'll get the new seat. Basically, push that back in the groove. There's a small groove that's back behind the threads. Just make sure that it fits snug back inside of that groove. Push it in there as far as you can and then use either like a screwdriver again or a sharp piece of metal. Make sure it sits back behind that thread so it sits over flush when you screw that in there. You get a false sense that the, uh, that the, that the uh, seat is pushed all the way down. Okay. Now that's in, uh, we're going to need to grease. Let's take a small brush, some of the dowel grease that we supply with the kit. Go ahead and apply that to the face of the seat. This will help in uh, reattaching and, and, and driving that, uh, that nut back in place. Once you've done that, now's a good time to inspect the ball. So go ahead and get the ball to a position where you can kind of take a look at it. Screw it into the closed position. And the areas that you want to look for are in the area where it's going to seal this raised surface here. Uh, what you're going to want to look for are any nicks or pits in the ball to make sure that the ball wasn't damaged during service or uh, something else has happened to the ball that would prevent that seal from uh, getting on that, that ball and creating good compression and good sealing. Once you take a look at that, we should be ready to go ahead and reinstall that nut. Just go ahead and screw the nut back in place just like a opposite direction of uh, when you installed it. Make sure it threads in good, and then go ahead and start using your, your hammer and, and, uh, and flat piece of metal again to go ahead and drive that down until it's flush again. Okay, now that that's uh, back in place, uh, last 
part of the repair is uh, while we've got it open and we've got the parts here, it's a good idea to go ahead and just replace this hose gasket. Um, even if it's not leaking, good idea to just go ahead and take care of it and get it done. That way you don't have to try and take it off the truck again and replace that gasket. Once the gasket's in, complete.